Ladies and gentlemen, boys and daddies, we are and thotties. We definitely go. Hope everyone had a good Labor Day weekend. Yes. Um, hope everyone drank and ate uh, a lot and were not productive at all. So, um, <laughs> happy birthday to Gypsy, man. Yes, happy birthday, Gypsy. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks, Come folks. out. Come out and show support. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, we did a little thing over at uh, Lazy Boys in White Plains on um, Americanic Avenue. Getting on lit. Friday. I was going to do the open bar, but honestly, it was like Monday night after that long weekend. I just couldn't. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. Hang. Couldn't do it. I, I, I definitely got to rap, though. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Did. I had to show up to show love, and then I definitely. was like, ah, like... I was it was tough. Couch, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad people came out. A lot of my people that I that I work with at the golf course came out because it made perfect we, sense. Yeah, why, we were off. The, we were off the next. Yeah, we were off the next day. But uh, it was good. We had a good good turnout. People came out. They turned up. They some a lot of people did indulge in the uh, all you can drink, forty dollar uh, forty dollar hour. Yeah, yeah, forty dollar hour. A lot of Lamala. Yeah, I definitely got turned. Juju was there. She got turned. Shout out to my boy Devin. Who's supposed to be here, but. He still turned. He got t- he got two turns. He, he got a little two turn. Yeah, he couldn't make it. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of love, and, and I'm still celebrating. We're probably gonna do something at the end of the month too. So oh, let's That's get it. Yeah, I'll keep everyone posted. That's let's what's get up, it. man. Oh yeah, I know how that is. Um, you have the weird days off from working at a golf course. I've done that before, so it's weird, you know. But uh, sometimes it was most popping nights. Honestly, I remember like I went out with my cousin once in Atlantic City, and then it was a Monday night. He's like, it's industry night. I was like, yo, no one's going to be out. It's Monday night. He's like, trust me. We went to this, like, one spot. Like, most of AC was acquired, but we went to this one spot. It was popping. And, like, people just losing their shit because they don't go out it, like, that much. Yeah. And, like, they just have, like, that one designated night. What industry was it? Fucking like, for people that work industry? on the weekends and people that work at those places and yeah. all that type of stuff. So, it was kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, I just want to send a special thanks out to all the fans that have been tuning in and stuff. And a lot of people see me and they're like, oh, I really like the show or... You know, I watch the show, I tune in, I, you know. I get text messages like, yo, like that show's dope. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it's weird. It's a good show. Weird, but it's just and like, I wish there was a way on Facebook where, I mean, we do most of our hits after the show. Yeah. I wish there was a, a way that we can, you know, uh, Facebook with the fan page is a weird thing. Like, I spent a lot of time over the past couple of years building my audience. I got about, you know, 20,000 followers on here, which is a blessing. But at the same time, when we put this show up, you know, it's only showing, like, so many people. So only so many shout people. Shout out to Facebook. You know, yeah, shout out to Mark people. Zuckerberg. We're actually about to get into something about Mark Zuckerberg. Are and, we uh, censoring? He's censoring people again? No, not that. It's just artificial intelligence and oh, uh, boy. where your stance is on it. Um, and also, we've been talking a lot of politics. I'm, I'm kind of eager to get back into the music and stuff. But whenever there is current events and politics, we will talk it. And it's tough, though, because, dude, uh, there's never been a time where the president has been talked about every second. Of yeah. Day. It's never. so weird. And I'm that person to criticize, like, when the narrative gets too redundant and stuff like that. But honestly, even those shows are some we build most of our engagement, a lot of engagement through some of those shows like yeah, we'll have yeah. the most views off some of those shows and yeah. it's like now I see why you guys do that type of thing but yeah exactly on a, on a it's a much gift and a curse scale, even, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a much larger yeah, 24/7. scale 24-7 we're getting a bunch of weirdos calling in and stuff yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They, you know what I mean so it's crazy yeah it's so fucking weird man Donald Trump he's like the most polarizing yeah, person he's the most popular ever. person on the planet, planet. Yeah. I was just I just happened to turn the TV on because I, I, it's hard for me to watch the news for more than five minutes yeah, every now yeah. and then I'll kind of like alright I'll talk myself into it and say alright I'm going to watch the news for a half an hour I can't get past more than five minutes and I'm like just yeah. the sound of everyone's voice <laughs> exactly. no matter if it's left or right or whatever and you know Trump's face will come up and he's, he's pushing his new tax reform and I was like alright let me just, just I'll just listen to him not giving him just listen to him and just Ten seconds into his voice, I was like, "This guy's our fucking president." Yeah. And I turned it off. Sometimes it's I was funny. Just when it's really hard to that. pay attention to the news because, like, the left is so biased against totally. him, and the right is so biased for it's him. It's been like yeah. that. So it's, it's just, just like you don't really know president. where you don't really know what's real. Exactly. Yo, that's it's so jaded. You don't know what the fuck is going on, man. Fake it's news. So weird. Fake news. And that's I, I'm a little pissed at him for that because we're saying everything's fake news because everyone was saying. Like, before he even thought about running, before he's running, everyone's like, oh, I don't trust the news, I don't trust... And now, all of a sudden, like... The, he it seems won like, based, seems like, like the left is going premise. back towards the news. Like, they're paying attention to media a lot more. 
That's what I felt like. I felt like after they they pushed the fake news and he kind of that helped him win, you know, for his platform and with his voter base. I felt that you know, as as crazy as they feel that the left is, you know, the quote unquote just, left. I mean, and I hate to overgeneralize. You know, it tends to be, you know, really smart people, really intellectuals, and yeah, maybe maybe they they were kind of. Um, you know, they, they, they called them, you know, the flyover states, the, the, the red states in the middle yeah. that the intellectuals in New York and L.A. weren't, weren't paying attention to. Yeah. But at the same time, you're dealing with a lot of really smart people. So if you're going to go ahead and criticize them and say they, they're, they're you know, overly biased, they're going to change their game and they're going to become more journalistic. Yeah. And they are going to dig. And I think, they're, they're, I think that the news and, and the people on the inside, the intelligence agency, is doing a great job. As much as we're not talking about at this very second, I think they're still going to work on on this Russia stuff with with, with Trump and stuff like that, and really trying to find out the bottom uh, of it. Because it seems like on the outside that there's something really, really, yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. there. Because like smoke, there may be yeah, fire. like fire. yeah. Because at first I was like, oh, there's definitely something, and then I was like, no, nah, this is a left wing conspiracy. They're trying to cover up the Hillary shit, and and now they're just mad that they lost and all this other stuff. But then they just keep going at it, and every now and then something come up. I'm like. Oh wow, that shit might be really fucking deep. Just, just just because his his cabinet members just keep fucking falling off left and right, like yeah. it's his own reality what the fuck show. Is that? I don't. That shit can't hire no one for more than ten even days. It's, even the, the, the Russia claims about artificial intelligence. It's, it's funny. I I read an article. I think it was in um, Fast Company or one of the tech magazines, and it was about artificial intelligence. You know, certain people's stance on it. Zuckerberg is very pro AI, and then you got guys Easy. like Elon Musk who are. A little more, hesitant. you know, a little yeah. more hesitant yeah, yeah. about really diving into that realm because it's, you know, the rule with technology how it advances so often, so many years. But yeah, Moore's law. It's gonna, yeah, Moore's law is gonna happen quicker than we think. Elon Musk is really like that guy to say, you know, whoa, and kind of make you think of iRobot movie real quick. Yeah, yeah. But um, you don't want that. But even Putin came out and said, whoever is winning in the AI race. Is going to be the person that wins World War Three, mm. and so it's pretty understood Putin's across G. the board. Putin's it's G. like <laughs> yeah. that is the race yeah. to controlling the world, which is scary if you think about that. And then, and I want to play a video. Um, it's a guy, Luke Radowski. A lot of you guys might know him. Some of you guys might not. He runs his channel called We Are Change, which recently he's been like kind of under attack by Google a little bit because he's one of these guys that had a lot of his videos demonetized. So that means that he's wow. not making the ad dollars that he would previously have made for his videos. And the great majority of his videos and especially the ones with the most hits, because he does stuff that's controversial, he does some conspiracy stuff, but he also does a lot of just factual stuff and um, you know presents independent news. but. Google hit that hit him with that stamp that we're gonna demonetize a lot of your videos, which is crazy and it's scary. We mentioned this on previous episodes how that could be a great threat to just, you know, it, you're killing someone. Now he doesn't, it, he doesn't want to put the time in. Like, like why would you want to put the time in? You right, don't he might have quit the time. his job. Yeah, he might yeah, quit exactly. his job or, or he might be or doing this full time. That's how he makes right. his money. Yeah. Or even part time. But that was probably always the goal to do it. Exactly. Full-time. Exactly, which is kind of crazy, kind of scary. Sen- it's it shows you how much the influence Google has and their political stance is like, right. yeah. it's, it's completely impacting. It's censorship. There was a the guy that just got fired from Google. He was actually on Joe Rogan's podcast today. I didn't get a chance to listen to the whole thing. I forget the guy's name. But, but he was fired from uh, Google because right because of uh, he had different views of uh, on. Yeah, what's going on with their diversity plans or something? Well, he had yeah. issues with what their diversity plans. That was a big thing. That was crazy too. But I'm gonna play this video. Um, it's a long video. It's a ten minute video. We'll comment over it at certain parts. But I do want to play the majority of it just because, you know, it's it's a good foundation for us to just talk about this topic and build off of. And you know, he puts a lot of facts into this video, and there's a lot of interesting, eye opening stuff. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. And you know what? Let's keep things light. And let's talk about the international AI, artificial intelligence, computing arms race that will create godlike powers, if not the next country that controls the world, or World War Three. Okay, yeah, I know. That was a little bit of an over-sensationalized hey, don't make me introduction. Paranoid, 
but I do believe there is some merit in being careful with AI artificial intelligence, which we will get into in this video. Now, of course, right now the world's eyes are on North Korea, as we're all dealing with a very dangerous situation, which ultimately comes down to the struggle of U.S. world hegemony and U.S. petrodollar supremacy, which you're not hearing at all in the mainstream media, but you can in our previous video that we did yesterday. Now, the situation in North Korea is a very serious one and shouldn't be underplayed, but there are very influential, important figures in this world that are warning us about a different danger. Now, of course, North Korea is answering back and threatening the United States. Russia is intervening and saying that we are at a risk of a global catastrophe that will amount to huge losses of human life, and at the same time is standing against the United States, rejecting more sanctions on North Korea. He's also verbally firing shots at the United States, saying that with this current U.S. administration, that, quote, it's difficult to talk with people who confuse Austria and Australia. He also came mm, out with a shit. statement saying Shots that Trump fired. is not his wife and he's mainly opposing what he calls military hysteria from the United States. Which again, as we told you in yesterday's video, is not just a conflict between the United States and North Korea, but really the United States going against China and Russia. Now, all these statements are making global headlines all around the world, but there's one statement that's being undermined here, and I think is extremely significant when we talk about the greater potential conflicts and dangers facing the world. And that's Vladimir Putin coming out and saying that the nations that lead in artificial intelligence intelligence will be the rulers of this world. Now, of course, artificial intelligence is the advancement of that? computing to such a level where it mm. will be at or even surpass human intelligence. That technological See, that possibility that is advancing at a very fast rate. And as Putin says and predicts that whichever country leads the way in artificial intelligence research will come to dominate global affairs. He said, quote, artificial intelligence is the future, not only for Russia, but for all humankind. It comes with colossal opportunities, but also threats that are difficult to predict. Whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. And from my understanding and research on the subject, I don't think Vladimir Putin is wrong. Already, we have seen major advancements in military weapons and drones that take human beings out of the actual reality of being able to kill and hurt someone. And artificial intelligence could be used to develop cyber weapons, control autonomous tools like drone swarms, fleets of low-cost quadrocopters with a shared brain that could be used for surveillance as well as attacking opponents. The entity that of course controls this kind of artificial intelligence that is smarter than human beings will of course dominate. And it's not just Vladimir Putin warning us about this, but also other tech innovators like Elon Musk, who came out recently and speculated that AI systems could even start to choose a war. That AI systems could choose to start a war if they decide that a preemptive strike is more probable path to victory. And Elon Musk, who himself worked with AI systems before, said that North Korea, quote, should be low on our list of concerns for civilizational existential risk. That, quote, competition for AI superiority at national it level most likely cause of World War III, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Now, those are very grand speculative comments that some people accuse Elon Musk of fear-mongering about, but Elon Musk is taking this threat very seriously as he and 116 other technology leaders sent a petition to the United States calling for new regulations on how such AI weapons are developed, That's calling crazy. for a ban on they lethal autonomous weapons, which they say could become the third revolution in warfare. Now, now, it's important to note here that most AI development is not in the hands of governments, but actually private corporations like Amazon, Facebook, and Google, which Elon Musk pointed out will create a power struggle and that governments will obtain AI developed by companies at gunpoint if necessary. Now, I know a lot of people play up to this fantasy of this transcendental super being, but in reality, I'm more concerned about machines that could carry out complex actions that could be in the hands of an unethical, immoral, selfish, power-driven corporation or government. And these machines are developing at a very fast rate, as Elon Musk put it. Because we have a double exponential at work. Uh, we have an exponential increase in hardware capability, um, and we have an exponential increase um, in the software talent that is going into AI. Um, so whenever you have a double exponential, it's very difficult to predict. Uh, but real predictions are almost always going to be too conservative in terms of thinking it'll be further out than it is. People thought defeating Go was either never or 20 years away. That was the world's best Go player was defeated. Um, and now that same AlphaGo system can defeat the top 50 players simultaneously with 0% of chance of them winning.
Now, personally, this is a little bit worrying. To me, Terminator. the basic laws of nature, you understand that you don't have as much like muscle mass as tigers or claws or teeth as big as tigers. But the only thing allowing us to be able to subjugate and be more dominant than bigger species in our natural environment is the fact that we're more intelligent than they are. If there is an entity that is being created that will be more intelligent than us, who says that entity won't subjugate us? It's a speculative theory, but I think one worth considering, especially if you look at the past record of some of these corporations and governments who are building this kind of super intelligence. And I can understand why Elon Musk sees artificial intelligence as an existential risk, because there are no public safeguards, there are no regulations, there's no accountability or transparency with someone building godlike powers in a machine. Elon Musk has been very critical of other AI developers like Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook and even came out and said that Zuckerberg's understanding of AI is limited which sadly only Shots made fired. Mark Zuckerberg double down and Mark Zuckerberg yep. responded by saying about how you how you build it you need to be careful about what you build and, and how it's going to be used but people who are arguing for slowing down the process of, of building AI um, I just find that um, really questionable right I, I i have a hard time wrapping my head around that because if you're arguing Easy. against ai then you're arguing against um you know safer cars that aren't going to have accidents and you're arguing against um being able to better diagnose people when they're sick and i mean i just don't see how how in good conscience a, a, a some people can do that so i mean i'm just much more optimistic on this in in general than than probably uh, a, a lot of folks are. Yeah, trust us. You have nothing to worry about. Be <laughs> optimistic, said the unethical cutthroat billionaire businessman who literally ran psychological experiments to control the emotions of his users who unknowingly participated in his experiment. I where unsuspected right users Wait, of what? Facebook Look. had a psychological experiment ran on them to control their emotions. Doing this all in secret, of course, seeing what would happen if they could make their users feel really sad or really happy. And as we know from the basic rules of marketing, if you could make someone feel insignificant, insecure, and sad, it's a lot easier for them to sell you useless crap that you don't need to fill that empty void that you have in yourself. And it's not just the bad practices of these major corporations that we have to worry about, but also clear connections to intelligence agencies that, of course, they cooperate, work with, and were funded by and started by. And sadly, no, Facebook has not backed down or become more careful, but has continued their AI progress and experiments to the point where Facebook's artificial intelligence robots had to be shut down after they started talking to each other in their own language. Now, of course, this is a multifaceted story that is a lot more complex than just that headline. And of course, Facebook. It's good we use Facebook, know, you know, for our platform. Yeah, it's great. But yet yeah. again, how would we <laughs> ever sure know since listening. there's no regulations or safeguards? Good and we have to trust the corporations whose interests, interests are, of course, financial and never have your interests at heart. But their financial needs. Experiments. And if yep. they did something that was very dangerous, guys, the Gone Cast is really just a social experiment. You guys are or let you know about it since they it's have no accountability to even do that. And it's not just FedBook that we have to worry about, but of course Google Fed that's book. building an artificial intelligence team in China right now. And mind you, this is the same CIA funded monopoly corporation whose sphere of influence is encroaching on our daily lives that many experts claim by 2030 that we will be living in a world that's run by Google. Mm -hmm. Larry Page, one of the Google 2 co-founders, once said offhandedly say. that Google that's is not about say. building a search engine. As he said it, oh, we're really making Why an not? AI. Google right we're now is all about yeah. building the world brain that will take well, care of mean, every though? person no, all the what, time what, what and everywhere. And today, where we look at a it's world this. already heavily dominated by Google, you Listen. can surely see the repercussions and dangers facing us. As they have clearly showed a political bias against their opponents and anyone who questions the status quo. While, of course, cooperating <laughs> with governments world. and their demands on them violating our privacy. Governments who are taking away more of our freedoms and destroying our civil liberties in the advancing technological world that we all live in. Just like we saw recently in Australia, where the police now have the authority to turn on your phone, your refrigerators, your microwaves, your home surveillance systems. Turn on your software refrigerator? that allows them to <laughs> surveil <laughs> you <laughs> even <laughs> without a warrant. The fuck? So yeah. Yeah, that's the I didn't that step my game up. <laughs> Crap, I really don't know what else to say. Um, fucking making my milk go back. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck. 
Um, your refrigerator got AI? Oh, in yeah. It? Don't go running into the woods with your tinfoil hat on yet. Don't All right, despair. so that's basically Don't give it. up hope. Um, Some of the things we talked about today are kind Shout of to scary, Luke. But try to not this guy's been doing it for a long time. When I went to the first Ron Paul convention thing down at Webster Hall in Manhattan, I saw him there. And, um... You know, so he's this guy that actually goes out in the streets, collects all his information, does everything on his own, and is truly independent. And he's been doing a real good job for a real long time. I've never heard of this guy. Luke Rudowski? I don't think I've ever You've seen You've heard of We Are Change, right? If That's I not have, loose, I'm thinking of Loose Change. I'm thinking of the 9 11. Loose, loose Change is the documentary. That's right. Alex Jones. Really? No, that's you definitely know. watch like a couple of his I videos and not know have. I just don't. Yeah. I just don't remember. See, he's like. Somewhat of an Alex Jones, but he's more reasonable, more you know, moderate, logical. He's not a puppet like Alex Jones is. Well, that's the thing. I feel like Alex Jones. You, you get Alex more Jones exposure. Now. You he's get bad. more he's exposure. So you're gonna gain more exposure. I feel like for going harder one way or the other, and then also doing more drastic things. Like if you just present facts like that and give you know, pretty standard, logical opinions and stuff. Your videos do really good. Like he's got like hundreds of thousands of hits, but you know him as a person and a character is not like as big of a it's name. It's not no nowhere near. You got you got to sensationalize the facts. Yeah, to, exactly. to get yeah. To, to get the real big views and you know you got to sell fear. But and, I almost and like I almost like doing it like him doing it that way. Exactly. Yeah. Only because like like Alex Jones, I used to I used to like love Alex Jones. Right. And now yeah. it's like. For me, it's like I don't like I don't even want yeah, to. sold out. I, I, I hope that, that that's where we are with our media consumption. I mean, we, we were talking about you know the right going after the left being, you know, with all those fake news. I, I would hope it would kind of level out the information that we would get and and how we like to consume our information and not want you know this kind of um, shock. You know, shock headlines and clickbait and stuff like that, and hopefully naturally. Clickbait, man. That's yeah, I, ju- I would just yeah, hopefully over naturally it. over time, you know, five, ten, fifteen years, we get away from it. But going back to Moore's law and what you were saying, how fast things are changing. I was just watching you, were, and you were laughing at, you know, the idea of having a Google world. You know, I was just watching that movie Seven. You know, the one with Brad Pitt and Morgan yes. Freeman oh, yeah. and, and Kevin Spacey. Good and movie. one of the ways that they 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 first got on uh, Kevin Spacey's trail was Morgan Freeman went to uh, the feds and looked up library books. And Brad yeah. Pitt couldn't believe that there was a database to find out what books you read. Yeah. And just to see Brad Pitt's face, you know, his reaction to finding out that there's, you know, a, a, a uh, consortium of a database, right, of, of all the all the books that we've all taken out the library. I mean, who, who even goes to the library now? You know what right. I mean? And this movie came out, I think... 96 or 97 right. you know 20 was i guess that's 20 years now but you know but i can totally say, see you, i can see a world where i mean am i you know my dad I want, he he mentioned that google sells information to cia oh right. that i'm not surprised about i know i think, I think verizon and like all your cell phone companies i think they sell your information yeah they i mean that's that, basically I, what snowden exposed too yeah. like like it's like they sell it for whether people. willingly or not, too. That these yeah. these places are going to yeah. take it, even That's if it's saying. not, you know, getting That's sold. What I'm saying. So, and it's just the internet of things. I mean, going back to the refrigerator. I mean, everything eventually <laughs> is going to be connected to the internet. When that you means. say a Google world, though, what do you mean? Like, I, I, I guess Google's like a super powerful He said he's building. Company. They're building like the Google brain to be like. That's where it, AI like comes. Like robot in. type brain. But that's where AI comes exactly. Vicky. Vicky, that's yeah, where AI I mean, comes. Vicky was a bad small bitch. wonder. Yeah, I love that bitch. Yeah, Vicky was a bad. <laughs> One of my first bitch. white girl crushes. <laughs> <laughs> Her and Goldie Hawn, overboard. Um, but for real. Uh, yeah, they have a brain. I mean, they have a computer part where that's they're what just he... feeding in information, exactly, and, and learning, you know, human behavior, human history, spending habits. I'm sure, emotional, psychological, evolution of humans, all that shit, and. You know, eventually, I mean, you know, YouTube, you know, Google owns YouTube. I mean, as it branches out and buys these patents and all these things, I mean, it'll be a Google world, but it won't, everything won't be labeled Google. They'll yeah, just yeah, own it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and the internet won't be internet brought to you by Verizon. It'll just be the internet. It just, it won't even, it'll be so seamless. I understand where matter. Zuckerberg and Elon Musk are coming from, though, from both of them. Because, like, Elon's, like, really trying to be, like, yeah, they take both, it they delicately. Both yeah, they make great points. Delicately. And then Zuckerberg's like, yeah, but we have like we have this opportunity here to make this, like to make a, this world better, to leave a, it better. Yeah. So it's like I understand where they're both coming from. There, yeah. There's this period where I feel like, yeah, with the development of AI, you know, there's tons of benefits. But the problem is going to be that that slippery slope. The the um, 
what do they, what do they call it? The uh, 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 in a black hole. Event horizon where you reach a point where the the uh, artificial intelligence becomes self-aware or it starts developing at a, at a faster rate than we can control it. Well, that's what it's saying. It's saying that yeah, like, are you comfortable just you two as people just knowing that there's going to be machines that are a lot smarter than you? Well, I already know my com- like I mean, my computers already know, but that, that are able. The calculator is much smarter than me. The computer that we're on is much smarter than us, but I'm talking about able to act on its information. Yeah, act I mean, on, we control those own. computers. We control. That's those what computers. I mean. If we unplug the computer, it can't. It, I'm not know. cool. I'm not cool with computers controlling me. Yes, yes. No, I, I'm, I'm not, not, not controlling us, but like that, it's that's part of it. Like it could if it wanted to. But yeah, but it would be. It would be controlling. You know. It would be controlling like computers and stuff. I like wish that. there was a way to to cap its intelligence. I know. If you could say, all right, you can only be as smart as a fifth grader, or you can only be as smart as a doctor, or whatever. It was saying like it can make a decision to take out, you know, people, cities, towns, whatever groups. But what know, happens if, if it sees it as a threat, and if that threat is the, if that, you know, intelligence deems it as the best way to go about, like you know, like, like the movie War Games. We talked about this. Yeah. Like the movie War oh, Games. Oh yeah. It's like, the only way, the only winning move is not to not play. To play. And then what if, what if you know, it's let's say, line. whatever, the U.S. government or Google or American company develops AI, the government uses it, and then what if the AI did, realizes, and I think that was in the movie, they realize that the government, oh, Eagle Eye, you ever saw Eagle Eye? With, I um, might have. Uh, 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 Shia LaBeouf. It was actually really no, good. It was, about, it was about a... Oh, no, I, artif- I didn't see that. It was really good. It was about a, the artificial intelligence computer that the government made, and then the, the the computer realized that the biggest threat was the U.S. government, and it started taking out the politicians. Gotcha. And smart computer. Yeah, I was gonna say, where's that shit at now? I know it's a really smart. Ah, uh, Rosaria Dawson's in this. I'll do it. Oh yeah, oh, she's, she's in it. so hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good movie. More, I, is Morgan Freeman so in it? I feel like there's an older. Morgan uh, Freeman is or like Michael in a Kane. lot of movies. Is it Michael Caine? Anthony Mackie, Morgan Shia Freeman. LaBeouf, Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson's probably in it. Something. There's like an older <laughs> Samuel Jackson in the most figure. movies ever, bro. I Respect so. the game. I don't know how, like, how do you? I want to ask him. How do you do it? You been like, uh, like so many movies, bro. You got, what do you do? You got time? You got a clone? Yo, there's a funny story with um, who's the director? Tarantino. Tarantino actually thought he was uh, not Morgan Freeman. Who's the other one? Yo, was Rosario Dawson is dating um, Eric Andre? Uh, Eric was... Andre, the football player? No, no the comedian. The funny weird guy. On oh, Sessions. word! Is that is that facts? Maybe. I mean, he's probably in real life, probably like a normal, really smart dude. Yeah, true. Like Tom Green. I don't know. Yeah, it's a real thing. Wow. Good for her. Good for him. Good Better for him. him. Yeah, I know. Better for him. I respect that. She kind of fell off a little bit. Though. A little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's not the same. She kind of looks like a mom. <laughs> I don't know. Age didn't treat her as well as it should have. Ah. All right, my bad. I'm, I'm creeping over here. A little bit. <laughs> um. So do you trust in a world where computers are self-reliant, independent no, thinkers? No, just because um, as much positive things as Mark Zuckerberg is pointing to, saying you know it could cure diseases and be able to properly diagnose, not misdiagnose things, I think that's great, For but for... As much concentration and money that we put into that, we're only going to dump more money into "quote unquote" defense. Yeah, but which I think is, which is really attack. The minds of the world have to come together at a point because, even though they're not, just because corporate interest and, at the end of the day, money and power is still the end game. But do you think governments should have more control over that, or should be individual companies over the, the AI? The government's going to get control of it because. I mean, not if, not if they get that fucking AI up and running before the government shows up. What do you mean? Because be, then they, they got they got the shit they got the weapon so to speak, quote unquote. Do you know what I mean? Like they. What have, are you saying? Like if Google launches it before the U.S. government? Yeah, if Google, if Google, Google you have to think of it, it before. It's, this is the problem because Google is becoming so. Patents. But Google's becoming so intertwined that it's almost an extension of the U.S. government. Like, think about it. It's going to get to that point. And it already is, because just the way that the CIA is working with Google and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, and that's the only, like, as much as Google is, like, wants to do good things, too, at the end of the day, what's the only way up from them? They already, you know, like, these guys are not thinking about 
they're always thinking progression and wh whether that's a, a distorted view of good and bad it doesn't matter progression they're just thinking more and more and more like these ceos and, and stuff like that they're just thinking like what's the next step what's the next step like they're not thinking about like turning back you know what I mean? like and i think the next step is only for them to get involved in, in world you know they think they're so confident in their beliefs like they think like it's 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 arrogant but they think that their their way is the way and they want to lead the future of human beings man i think a lot of them go into it a lot like teachers and, and police officers you sounded so and lawyers right there <laughs> <laughs> you sounded so of human beings man <laughs> I just feel like people go into it. I'm, I'm just glad I was born when I was born, man. Like, I was able to see AOL dial-up modems, and, you know, the, the, I was like also the, the benefit of, of the Napster. I think it's all destiny. It's all going to happen regardless. And, and, and then, like, my kids are the ones that are going to have to take this L. You know what I mean? Yeah. But are they going to take it? Like, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's How long is it going to take? It's, that's, that's, it's tough to say what's going to happen because, like, nobody knows. Like I don't start. mean to be like so negative and stuff. But I, I've, it's def I there's definitely going to be some type from. of war, some type of attack with robots. It's bound to happen, and this shit is going to be well, so like out of care. The question is, no, nah, I'm, I'm talking I about. I think they would just like shut down the computers or like shut. Like I, I don't know. No, no, I'm not talking about us against robots. Uh, I'm talking about the like, U.S. Army going to invade. A computer uh, sending a nuke somewhere. U.S. Army going to invade Afghanistan, and it's 90 percent robots. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like eventually, it's gonna get to that level. We already and, do it with drones. I know, but and then the question becomes: At that point, does the world come together? Does the UN and everyone that's not in the UN even come together and say, "Yo, we need to chill"? Because is this even? It, it, do we start to look at it us against them? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, just but like, do we start to look at it to for say, humanity? It's hard to say. Like, you know what I mean? Because yeah, if you send robots in, I'm just saying uh, uh, some, some uh, uh, what's, what's it called? Uh, what's his name? Iron Man wrote war robots into, like, North Korea, and they, exactly. and they, and they defeat Kim Jong-un. Everyone's going to be like, yay, robots. Is that really? Well, that's another thing. You know? Yeah. It depends on, you know, what side is good, what side is bad. I don't know. I don't know. I think it'll take some time. I, th I think just like a lot of a lot of these things that happen with technology, they get us with the, with the shiny new toys and they make things really cool looking, like iPhones yeah. and you know geo positioning and GPS. And, and who really and apps. knows? But then the, then the downfall comes. So who, I don't know. Who really knows what each government possesses? Like our government, so. Russia, China, you know, the powerful governments of Japan. Like who really knows what they have? Each government has. No, you know, we could have some fucking secret shit. They could have some secret we shit. We don't know. I mean, especially when it comes to big things, like, we don't expose that until, you know, like the Manhattan Project. That was on the low low until yeah, it was yeah. time to blow blow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, you don't know. I think it's cool, but I definitely ha I definitely am, like, on, like, Elon Musk's side because that guy's the man. With him just being like, yeah, I kind of, you know what I kind of, but, I feel but you like don't want to see. He it called out Zuckerberg. He was like, I know, but you, you don't, don't want to see like that, that kind of shit. Like, I, I have like, see everything. Have like a fucking I, I like a contact. I've said this before, like a contact in your eye or something that should just make like a blink or something, and you do something. I don't you got to watch Black Mirror, dog. There's an episode of that <laughs> yeah. shit, and it's per you saw it. You saw yeah. the episode, yeah. There's an what episode where I know where, I only saw one episode, but I saw that show. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Well, each each episode is a, it's like a, it's almost like Twilight Zone. Each episode is yeah. a different You're show, so to speak. It was really good too. It was just freaking me out. I just don't. Certain, sometimes, like I appreciate stuff like that. And which one do you watch? Did you remember the one with the girl with the likes? Oh yeah. What, what yeah. is the name? Super, yeah, which a, is super real. Good one. Which what? is so gonna happen? What is the name of this? Black Mirror. It's on Netflix. Black, Black oh, Mirror. It's a, I don't have Netflix. Oh, Damn, like dog. Sign in so my much. account. What's yeah. wrong with you? All right, I'll give you a login. But there was one episode, I won't, I won't ruin it, but basically nice. in the future, because all of them take place in a not-too-distant future, like everything looks pretty much normal as it does now, but there's a few pieces of technology that are like clearly in it, you know, in the future, but you can tell it probably is going to happen in the next five, ten years. So in the future, everyone has these things in their eyes where they can record everything that they're watching, and they can rewind it, and they can push the video to the TV in the room, and everyone can watch what they're watching and stuff like that. Anyway... A uh, guy comes home uh, to a dinner party with his wife, and she sees he sees her flirting with another guy. And Meet turns, Grady. Yeah, and it just turns into this whole 
uh, clusterfuck with, with the downfall of his marriage, and because of the technology in their eyes, it's very interesting to see how the relationship de devolves. And, you know, catching someone cheating and saying, you know, being able to call him out, I know you cheated on him because you, I saw you, or like... Let's take a look at the tape. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> put, put your, yo, exactly. Yo, this shit is crazy. And it gets emotional. Yo, it's crazy. Uh, that's funny. Check it out. Black Mirror. I forgot the name of the episode. Oh, man. But that's it's funny. really fucking good. So. Well, let's it take a look good. at the tape. Exactly. <laughs> and she's like, no, no. He's like, put your shit. Put your right here's fucking Here's his dick. Right. <laughs> yeah, John Madden in it. <laughs> Boom. Right. Drawn circle. And it's all, it's all POV. Drawn that's the crazy thing. It's POV because it's coming from their eyes. So it's like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's so crazy. Technology. Yeah. Like, I'm so interested in it. I know. I really am. I just, I, I don't know. It's, it's a slippery slope. As they say. It is, it is, but I don't know. I think, I think, I think we have, you it's know. It's ultimate yin and yang, I think, good and yeah, bad. Yeah. I, exactly. I, but I think we have the people in place that, you know, like people like Elon and Mark. They, these guys aren't stupid, bro. No, I know. I mean, they're young billionaires for a reason. Yeah, but they're, they're not fortune tellers. Like they're not, they're not. Yeah. They can't. No, they're even not. Elon was like, "Yo, the, the 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 math and the because they these people are so smart that they can they you don't can think he has almost his hand in AI? huh? You don't think he has his hand in AI at all? Of course, he keeps himself aware of it. I'm sure he's developing, and I'm sure he's developing ways to maybe try and make it safer and stuff like that. But I think he feels that Zuckerberg is more of a capitalist and is more reckless with it. I almost see Zuckerberg well, he, he like kind of dialed Edison. back when Elon called him out about it. He's right because he knows, and he and I mean. Shout out to Zuckerberg for doing that. He kind of humbled himself, and he knows that he doesn't know as much about it as Elon does. And he said, you know, maybe, you know, basically saying, I don't know, but I'm just hoping for the best. Yeah. And I think that there's more positives. That's pretty sweet, but like if the exactly. world goes down, you're a fucking billionaire, and you go to your private island with all your other billionaire friends and everyone else. No, I problems. totally, I totally get it. And just the fact that he pointed out that shit about Facebook is crazy. I mean, the willingness that, like, Zuckerberg at the end of the day, even look at your phone. I was talking to my friend the other day about this. I have like four different apps for Facebook. Like you have the Messenger yeah. app. I have the Facebook app. I have the Facebook Pages app because I do this. Right. And it's just like I'm getting notifications. And I get notifications for bullshit. He's just trying to keep you in his product as long as possible. Yeah. Like his thing is, all right, just keep people in their phones. Every day he's thinking, how do I keep people using my products longer? But like he has no fucks. But he has no pause as far as to like sit back and look at it and it's like, yo, for human nature, is it just good with everyone walking around with their heads down? Right. And I'm so victim to it as everyone else is, but I'm bad with it. But also like Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and it's like all, all Yeah, like, he like, just all rips these... everything, right. man. Like he just basically like Twitter and Snapchat were both unique and I mean he does good like but he's good at what he does, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, like yeah. I like shout out to Marcus. He's a Zuckerberg. Jordan of social media. Yeah, he is. But he just ripped that. So Blaine, he took the hashtag, took the at, put it on oh, Facebook, yeah. and he took the stories from Snap and put it on Instagram. Now you're obsolete. There is like That was gangster. Right, though. Peace, Snapchat. We really don't need you no more. That was gangster. But yeah. I, I use Snapchat. I don't even use that thing. Whatever, just their version of Snapchat. I feel like on, I do. on Instagram, I do. Zuckerberg is like Zuckerberg is like oh, Con not Edison. Facebook, I don't. Zuckerberg is like Con Edison, and as, um, uh, Musk is like Tesla. Tesla. Is, is exactly. Tesla. Yeah, exactly. Because Con Edison was a gangster. Oh, he was Tesla. ripping, yeah. ripping. Con, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, Thomas I mean? had, yo, he you really have these great was. ideas. All right, boom! I got the platform, and right. I got you know the mind to and put it out to like, mass level. He tried to sabotage Tesla by killing a. Uh, Elephant? Did he? With the oh, with the light, with his with the alternating with current. With the AC, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. One of them right. had AC, one of them had DC. I yeah. forget which one it was. I think Tesla had the alternating current. I think. Tesla had the one we use now. Yeah, he's right. Exactly. And without that, we'd we'd be fucked. That's but, what I'm saying. I don't know. I just feel like uh, yeah, Zuckerberg. He doesn't. He doesn't. He's an opportunist. He's he's a businessman. Yeah, what, what's that line that says we were so busy whether uh, figuring out if we could do it? We should have been thinking about whether if we should should have been yeah. doing it. It's almost like that skit in on uh, Aquemini. It's a great point. Um, oh, we got a call coming in. Oh, cool. Let's take the call. We got a goner? We got a goner. I want to get back to that skit because I love Outcast. Yeah. Call it. What's going on? The gone cast. Gone. There he gone. is. Yeah, I just got out of work, man. I'm sorry. I saw your text. Ah, it's all good. Yeah, I was, time, man. I was seeing if but you could come on the show. 
I don't yeah, you should you should just night. come on the show because you call in every week. <laughs> <laughs> just come in. I know, we're gonna have the biggest, mic su- biggest supporter, man. The show you, is great. I gotta be honest, you. Are. I don't know what you guys are talking about, so I don't want to like. It's if you're talking about something cool. really happy and positive, just take it like completely negative and sour and sad. It's all good. But I just feel like it's the time to talk about it. It's September what? It's the sixth today. It's the sixth. Next week on Monday it'll be the eleventh. Can we can we can we get into Tower Seven? We talk about it, man. Like, building can we seven. Just talk about how. Uh, yeah, building seven. Sorry, can we just get into yeah. how much of a joke that is yet? Like this long ago, and still, no one even talks about it. It's like just straight up disrespect. It's crazy. Yo, man. I saw something when I was in a studio. I was in a studio that was kind of near Times Square, and there was this huge billboard, and it was like one of those gift billboards where it's you know keeps replaying the same thing, and it was building seven, and it just had like a. A message out of it, and it was like ask about building seven and i was like yo who put this up here and how it Wait, like really? it was recurring and running constantly and where was it it was have... building in time square jesus you snapped that. that's crazy <laughs> i'm pretty sure i did this must oh, this was probably well, like a year and a half ago family oh. members they've got commercials usually around this time you see it on tv i haven't seen it in a while but usually around this time yo but it, TV it, spots. isn't it nuts that like it had that I like I was like, yo, who paid for this? I, f- I feel like this was that was the one thing like in American history as far as like the timing. Like we've had enough uh, conspiracy theories between Kennedy and whatever yeah. the war on drugs and whatever that and, and enough media coverage that we as as citizens we could finally be like, all right, we got them. You right. know what I mean? It's not like right. we have to wait thirty years to realize whether there's conspiracy I agree theories. With that. Or not. We got them, and still, still we we don't have them. I mean. But that, is, that made it clear as day to me that if this running in Times Square didn't <laughs> cause, like, some type of fucking rally, like Colin Kaepernick or, like, any other thing, yeah. then there's a problem. But most people don't even know about Building 7. Still, but that was, still, yo, why can't you just years. fucking go on your phone and be like, yo, what the fuck is that? Boom, click on the phone. Because people don't, because they're in their phone looking, looking at Yelp or fucking yeah, what true. restaurant to eat at, your Fadis. <laughs> I do that too, though. I ain't lie. I'm a Wadi. That's a fact. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, man. Building seven, the whole, the whole nine eleven shit is crazy. Still. Yeah, but building seven even more. Like the Pentagon specifically. But even like the Pentagon. Pentagon to me was the craziest. (laughs) Because that building is like three feet high, and they were like a jumbo jet crashed into the front door. I was like, wait, what? Well, it crashed into like the fucking accounting side of the building. Right. Right. Like it's a big ass fucking building, and it crashed into like the accounting and like taxes and shit. And then, like, there was, like, an announcement, like, a couple days before 9-11 or something about that, about There's taxpayers' so many money being fucking missed, weird missing. things so going it's on just with like, that whole day. It's just odd. Like, it's easy to fall down the, the wormhole of fucking oh conspiracy theories. Because, believe and that will me, take you I there. spent hours. Yes, it yeah, it will. Especially, like, in my, will, early, no, you're right. <laughs> in my early 20s, I was, like, conspiracy theory master. I don't know. I was, like, the worst. So was I. It was so bad. I was like Jesse the Body Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was such a big fan of his show. Yeah, because he had a show called Conspiracy Theory. Yeah. I know. And I remember when it got canceled, I was like, yo, the government. Like, yo, the government. <laughs> I was like, yo. So, Kuala, do, do you think uh, anything is ever going to happen with, with the 9 11? Do you think 30 years from now the government will, will nah. ever admit that, you know? Cause oh, they, come on. No way. No, I mean, I was not. surprised that a few years ago that they, they admitted that they assassinated Martin Luther King. I thought that was pretty wild. Did you hear about yeah. that one? Wait, that was what? That pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, the government admitted. They put out some blurb or, pre- Get or press. Get the fuck yeah. time the fuck out. Yeah, Google it. Basically, like FBI. <laughs> Google shit. it. Wait, they admitted. Is, that, is that, that real? I swear to God. I swear to God. G- Google government commits. Kill, yeah, admits Gover- to US assassinating Martin US Luther King. government admits. They told the family. They were like, oh, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My bad, you know. Just take out like one of the most influential people. This yeah. Oh my God, it's the first name pops up. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I you know, maybe check some notes. Maybe I'm wrong, but you know, I'd, ha- I'd have to look into it. But that's look into it. That's fucking crazy. But the, but I think that just shows you, you know, the the human condition. I mean, we, I mean, Jesus Christ could literally come back tomorrow. I say that sometimes. Yeah, we would snap would be it. Like, nah. Right, or we would snap it, be impressed, and then the next day we'd keep it moving. I mean, we're the worst. We are. <laughs> we are the fucking worst. We are. I, I've I've thought of that too before. You know. 
But um, I mean, I got nothing to say besides that. Like, literally, it's just so crazy that I, I always think about it at this time of the year. Obviously, because of what's going on, and you know, the 11th and the anniversary. I'm just. You guys think it was I mean, bombs in the buildings? Is that what you guys think? I don't know. Or do you think controlled or, demolition? Pot, you know, I building kinda, seven. I kind of yeah. step back. See, building seven. Yeah, that's why building I only seven. Yeah, like there's like yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. At the end of the day, like if you want to give me theories about how they just fell with the planes, that's valid. So, but the building seven thing, there's no way that debris hit that building and it just collapsed. It's just debris. That well, they said that debris hit it, and then like there was a fire, and then another fire, and another fire, and yeah. I don't know. I don't know enough about demolition. I mean, I can only believe what someone else that yeah, knows about exactly, demolition yeah. tells me. That's the problem too. We don't really know that much about yeah, it. Yeah, I definitely don't know anything about demolition. Um, I don't know, but <laughs> right there, when people say, I, I just say, "Yo, what's good with Building Seven? Before trying to prove or disprove any of the other stuff, which gets real deep and there's a lot of rabbit and wormholes you could dive in, but Building Seven right there alone is just something that's just there's no there's no answers for the questions. And Pennsylvania, where was the plane? I didn't see any seats. <laughs> well, that's because in Pennsylvania, they uh, they got gangsters and said, fuck that. <laughs> they, they, they were like, I'm not the <laughs> box cutters, shot. bro. Fuck that. Yeah. Which is, like, true. It's Think inside. about it. Like, if you like... But did you hear all the crazy stuff, though, too, though? Like, for example, when when Seven went down, right? Yeah. And all that stuff happened. When you say pull it, you mean? The problem about that was oh. that... There was files in there related to a lot of, yeah. ex, you know, federal investigations. It was a federal bill. It was so like the FBI building. Yeah, they, they said they lost about ten thousand of its cases. Mm. Like, yeah, that's one of the, the files things, and yeah. like it was lost. Like all the evidence they had, yeah, and all their cases went down. So and like they all never the emails them. with the WorldCom scandal that they, they were, the SEC requested from Solomon Brothers, the Citigroup, with the housing, like it was all in that building and boom, gone. Yeah, that, never, that's one of the biggest points about it. Like people the black benefited. boxes from the planes they never found, which those things are, like, supposedly indestructible. Right. Well, they found a guy, the guy's license. <laughs> yeah, or, like, a passport <laughs> his or something. Passport. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the building fell, but they found his paper passport. Plastic passport. Yeah, that's oh, crazy yeah. to me. Like, come on now. Come on, man. I know. But, you come know. on, man. And then I don't the, think the, we'll, the guy we'll know. bringing out that uh, insurance, po- the the insurance policy on the um, – Oh, yeah, that's one of the big things. The government definitely had JFK killed. Silverstein with a, a huge uh, making a lot of money off of 9-11. I mean, and even the thing is, here, here's, here's what I'll say. Like, there's a difference between doing it, right? And you still there? But it's another thing to... So, can you hear me? You must be standing yeah, by yeah, the... Yeah, you kind of cut probably out. Probably standing say by the again. microwave, your body. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's kind of taking me down because you know what I'm talking about here. It's taking the phone. Yeah, go so for there's it. There's a difference though. between between doing something right like pulling the pulling the trigger right and i don't think they did that but right. there's another thing between no one who's going to pull the trigger and no one's happening and standing away and making an environment where it could happen right like right that's what i think most likely happened i it's think them doing it but thing. it was them knowing about it and then letting Speculate. it happen definitely it was a team effort well they were warned kind of yeah, rice was warned about it but that's just the thing i mean I mean, we get threats all the time as a yeah, country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm pretty sure. Can't go you can't, you can't hold them. But yeah, it, is right. odd, it is odd, though. Yeah, because... I mean, any happened. conspiracy theorist would run with that. Yeah. yeah. They knew. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that, that's I'm tough. so glad I took a step back from conspiracy theorists. <laughs> <laughs> you feel healthier? Yeah, I just... My mind is fresh. Yeah. No, nah, it so. is, for sure. Because you, you almost get depressed following this shit. Like, you feel somebody. helpless. Because then like, you can have all do? the evidence. You have all the evidence, and then what? What are you going to go after the government? Yeah. Do? Come on, please. Exactly. That's why it's so funny. Oh, look. People are like, you know, you got to get your guns and your stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, all right. Well, those motherfuckers got, like, rail guns, and they got <laughs> fucking <laughs> atom bombs. The rail they got, guns. They got what the fuck are you going to do? They got lasers, bro, yeah, that fucking like, melt you. Yeah. Like, like, what? It's too late. They won. <laughs> Sorry. That's what it is. I do people. People are like, yeah, like the military coming. Like, dude, the military has family too. You think they're just gonna fucking that too? The soldiers are gonna be like, yeah, fuck my family. No, they're gonna be like, well, hold on, I'm not taking these orders. Shout out to Cameron Bell tuning in with the comments on uh, 9/11 here. That's like uh, I forgot what movie it is. Call in. It was like, oh, it was uh, the movie with Brad Pitt, uh, Zombie, the zombie, uh, Z Nation, Z. What was it? Uh, yeah, I didn't see that one though. So there was a scene when he when the zombies start for, first attacking and he runs in a supermarket. And he sees a cop, and he's like, help me, help me, help me. And the cop just runs right by him, gets some water, and keeps, keeps it moving. 
Yeah. And it's like, you know, when it's the end of the world, like, or or not even necessarily the end of the world, but just major those are some trauma of the most, like that. Those are some of the most grossing movies, and I think that's, like, part of the reason Will Smith just banks it, because he did I, Robot, did I Am Legend. Yeah. There's something about the plot of that movie that makes it just interesting to, you know, I Am Legend. Did Men in Black. Movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Men in Black, yeah. He, totally. like, knows how to pick them. Oh. He's, he's an alien. Yeah. He probably exactly. It's the ears. You, you can know. tell. Zuckerberg, by the way, he's an, he's an alien. No, he's not an alien. He's a robot. He's talking about artificial intelligence because he's the king robot. They yeah. sent him back from the future. <laughs> they sent him back from the future. He's the king exactly. robot. Exactly. He's like, no. He's we so awkward that he does robot. look like a robot. He's just a nerd. Yeah, he's just a nerd. <laughs> he's just an awkward fucking genius. Yeah. Yeah, he 100%. is. 100%. Yeah, no. All right, know. I'm going to leave you on, on, on one note. Frank, I know you gave up the conspiracy theories, but there's a big conspiracy theory around your boy. Ezekiel? Uh I knew that was coming. Oh, man. I don't even want to dive into that, but that's crazy, too, man. I don't know. What is it? Let's fucking dive into that, because this is bullshit. I don't know anything about it. I'm going to hang up, but but even even me, not even a cowboy fan, that's the ball. Thanks for the call, man. It's fucking, to, to, Uh, to fucking summarize it quick, he was accused of, obviously, domestic violence. Right. In two different states. Neither of the police departments in, in any state filed charges. They said there's no ev- not enough evidence. Okay. The NFL ends up suspending him six games. What? So, you know, I understand him, like, because he, he did other things. He pulled his girl's top down at Mardi okay. Gras or something. I mean, I mean, he's, you know, giving a view for everyone. Yeah, yeah, Anyways. Yeah, you know, he had the the weed incident and all that stuff. So, anyways, they suspended him six games. Mm-hmm. Now he they they basically filed for like some uh, I don't know even know what they called it injunction. Yeah, whatever. So now he's playing tomorrow or this weekend. He filed the injunction. Yeah, okay. someone on the players association, players association or someone okay. on yeah, his yeah. behalf. Yeah. They're filing like some restraining order or something to like on the on the suspension, which is I don't know whatever. I don't know how that works either. Well, basically, the girl who is accusing him of uh-huh. this, they found text messages of her saying she's going to blackmail him. Oh, saying wow. She, I'm a white girl. Bill Roger Goodell, you dude. are a clown, bro. I'm you a, are a clown. I'm a white girl. I've been waiting to say this for a while. Roger Goodell, I just don't. But it's crazy. The Yo, he's a clown, bro. Say she's, she's a white girl. He's a black guy. Yeah. They'll never believe him. Right. Yo, the whole thing with Wild Rick- shit. The whole thing with I Ray, believe. too. Obviously, he mishandled that. He dropped the ball. Ray should have been suspended. A Definitely. whole season. Definitely. He should have yeah. spent a whole season. And now that he can't get back into the league, which whatever, you know, I that think tape he, was I, really he deserved, bad. Uh, he deserved a second chance. If his wife had I, I believe he chance, deserved a second chance, too. If, if the NFL had been do doing, it, if the, the NFL, NFL had been sorry. policing their players better up until that point, I would have agreed with getting rid of Ray Rice forever based on the video. Right. But because they're so. But he gives them two games and then the team come out and now you ban for life. Like, there has yeah. to be, like, yeah. there's no, there's nothing. It's just because you're hearing the outlash and you're all worried about your dollars. You're all worried about your advertisement. All the corporations buying into the NFL. Even the same thing that we addressed on the Colin Kaepernick episode with, you know, them getting money from the U.S. Army and stuff, which kind of blew my mind. It's all about the dollars to the NFL. They don't give a fuck. Don't let that get wrong. Like, well, don't let it get Ray twisted. Rice said about Kaepernick? What? Uh, not Ray Rice, uh, Ray Lewis. He said that yeah. they were going to sign him. I know, I know. But first, let me finish this rant on Roger Goodell. We're talking about all people from 914 right now, Damn too. Right. Roger Goodell, Ray Rice, Mark Zuckerberg. He's from 914? Roger Goodell, yeah. From Bronxville. What? Yeah, he's from Bronxville. Shocker. He's from Bronxville. Shocker. Big shocker. Yo. <laughs> my man. Like, get it right, bro. Just get one right. Shocker. And, I, yo, the thing that I heard today, too, this morning was someone said that one of the investigators that thought he was innocent or was going to make a, a case that he was innocent yeah, was yeah. not let into yeah. the room yeah, when they were what? discussing his suspension. And like, yo, you are fucking crooked, exactly. man. You are foul, Crazy. bro. Crazy. Like, and, and Zeke, listen, play. I'm not saying he's got the best, I don't know, attitude or the best record going for him because even he had some incidents in college, too. Yeah, so, like you say, you know, obviously. character issues there. So I would have understood that. Like, he doesn't the get the benefit of the doubt. I would have understood that. Right. But... Now it just looks like, well, like, what are you doing? Horrible. What are you, like, what are you so doing? Bad. It looks so bad. 
Like I, I don't, I don't know. And, one, and then he dropped the ball with the Spygate thing, and then like he hit Tom Brady for the four games, which was cool. But in reality, that should have been two games. Yeah. Like it's just, I just feel like he's just doing things just because he hears the outlash and the outcries of when he fucks up. So then he tries to over reprimand someone. It's like, yo, how are your kids, bro? Like, how do you, you don't know how to do nothing, man. Like, he's a fuck boy. He's a fuck boy. He's a fuck boy. He's from Bronx. But you know what? The NFL's a billion dollar business. NFL is some billions. fuck shit, man. I'm billions. serious, bro. Billions. Yeah. NFL has billions. the golden goose. The NFL has the golden goose. And the Ain't second they nowhere. lose that, they're fucked. They're the worst run company there is. Where I, I'm anywhere. talking about major sports thing, though. Yeah. Compared to the MLB, which was pretty bad, too, with Bud C. League in the 90s. Yeah, and the But they're worse. The NFL is worse. And NBA, they're on the forefront. Yo, Adam Silver's a fucking man, yo. He's mad progressive. He's doing his thing. And he's really open to... Yo, he's so ahead of the game. So ahead of the ball. He feels like one of those, those uh, uh, league of... Or That's because he had whatever. David Stern, though, too. David Stern was... David Stern was a dick, though. Yeah, David know. Stern was more of a he dick. He was the one that, that made everyone wear the suit because of Iverson on the bench. Yeah. Yeah, Remember but he, but he still rolls. like had a lot of respect around the league, David Stern. He did. Yeah. He did. I shouldn't. I shouldn't bash him. You're right. I don't mind the suit thing, but um, I, 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 I kinda, if it came kind of because me. of that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's I'll the be, fact I'll be that honest. it's the fact that it wasn't always like that. Yeah, I, and I listen. I think I don't know. I'm kind of 50-50 with I- Iverson getting his hair braided by his mom on the sidelines. You guys remember that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. During during the game, Iverson yeah. was getting his hair braided while he's on the bench. His mom sitting behind him. That's why people from that generation don't realize like Iverson was like yeah. a trendsetter he of really trendsetters. Was. Yo, when Daddy I was in shorts. basketball camp, when I was in like seventh everyone grade, wanted to be him. eighth grade, yeah. everyone had cornrows, bro. Yeah. Everyone had everyone the answer, wanted to be uh, him. The answer wristbands and yep. stuff. Right. Every super baggy shorts. He was the man, bro. He was so good. Yeah, super baggy he was shorts. So good. He was, yo, he was everyone a wanted product. crossover. He was a product of the super baggy white tee and baggy Speaking shorts. Speaking of crossover, right. I got crossed bad today. <laughs> Did you? Like really almost fell. <laughs> oh god. Yo, but this kid, I mean, he, he plays down Dykeman. Like he's like there was like really good kids today at, at LA Fitness. Shout out to LA Fitness. <laughs> bro, it was it was bad, bro. It was, he had I wish we had, had the tape of that. I wish we had that uh, Black Mirror tape. And, yeah, he, and he yeah, drilled no, right? the three too. Woo! Which oh, made, made it shot. worse. That's icing. Like he he had he came and dribbled and like pulled back with his left. So he's like driving towards. Anyway, he pulled back and I was like, "You went for it? Not, dude. Oh. Like I just lost my footing." So I was like, "This." Was everyone like, "Oh, was, was it packed gym?" Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> It wasn't like super packed, but like his team, like the team that was winning like 19 games in a row, like the fucking Golden State Warriors. Yeah. Like they were laughing and I was like, fuck all y'all, man. That's some bullshit. Yeah, I love when gyms are like that, man. Did did they run run in the court and scream? Was it one of those? Yeah, it was. It wasn't like it wasn't like that crazy, but they were like laughing and shit. And it it was the O's and O's. I don't give a fuck. I'm not. Nah, nah, you gotta. Nah, it's all good. I've been crossed before. You gotta do like a real (laughs) white kid, come down the court and then hack someone hard the next play. That's it. That's it. I jacked up. Fuck, man. I jacked up a three from like half court. That's good. That's even better. Yeah, fuck everybody. But um, I'm bringing us all down. That happened like a week ago. Um. Some kid, he fell. He like slid across half the court because it was like a fast break. And then this kid was, and it was a fast break. And then like he went to kind of go steal the ball, and the kid like euroed him. Oh. And so like he had all his momentum going there, and he just slid on the floor, oh. and everyone lost their shit. Everyone was like, ah! <laughs> you know that video where the kids are in front and they're all like screaming. Shit. Yeah. But sometimes those kids get too carried away with that stuff. Like sometimes, like someone will kind of get bopped. And, and, oh, yeah, yeah. And people, are like, oh, oh, oh. And then like nothing happens, and a kid misses a and shot. Misses I'm the like, shot, bro. So, what yeah. you, like, first of all, no one officially got crossed. And second of all, it wasn't that bad a defense if he didn't make a bucket. You know how hard it is to guard somebody <laughs> if they have a quick first step. Yeah, bro. It's very hard. White people yeah. were not blessed laterally. <laughs> it did, but I was not today. It was bad. Nah. And if they got a quick space, shot, bro. forget about it. Because then you got to give them the space. But, you, you, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. When like, kids hit me with he- Like, if, if there's someone that's quick that's good with hezzies, I have no chance. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, just, I don't know. I could guard people that are fast and stuff like that. But, like, something about hezzies, like, I get caught on my feet sometimes. Like, if yeah. a kid's, like, really that quick, I, well, I, I have no this shot. This kid had a jumper, too. So, I had that's to get I'm up tired. on him. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get up on him a little bit. So, I was trying. I was, like, didn't want to give him, like, too much room. So, I, gave, I got up on him. And he made a move like he was going to the rat. He's faster than me. No. Shocker. So when he pulled back. <laughs> when even he, with the new frame? Yeah. When, when, he, when he pulled back. Yeah, even 30 pounds down, he's still fast. Damn. Yeah, because he probably weighed like 150. He looked like Floyd Mayweather out there. 
<laughs> but he was drippy though. Shout out to him. Drippy long stockings. Fuck him. That's some bullshit. Don't worry. But, uh, so what else is yo, going shout out to my team last night. We won um we won a chip. What? Yeah. Damn. The whole damn thing, huh? I, well, nah, what I league? don't know. It's weird. It's it's just one of Manhattan. It's, yeah, the Manhattan League. I didn't played in it for like two, three, like two years, and then they called me back to play. And then I, I was just it's, it's so funny like our team because no one's like that great, but it's just it's where like just mad good chemistry for whatever reason. Like everyone just kind of like works play with each other for a while. everyone just yeah. plays the ball like plays with each other and just. I don't know. It just worked out well for us this season. So shout out to us. Yo, there were some games like we was putting up. Yo, we were trying to get a hundred all season because there was games we put up like night. We put up ninety five like two two times, and then one time we had like eighty eight or, or ninety. Well, uh, the games are. This is what I like about it. I think it's twenty five minutes a half or something. Oh, like that. that's nice. So we got extra time. I almost caddied for John Starks the other day. Yo, I was fucking pissed. That's his I boy. I got to work late too. It's fuck, that's, that's, that's that's Kenny's boy. boy yeah, right that's there. mine too. Oh, is it? That's yeah. one of my. That's my. He was growing up. He was my favorite. Heroes, yeah, bro. he was my favorite Nick growing up. <laughs> I, I got to work late, and it was on my birthday. I was, I was like, fuck, this was supposed to happen. It didn't happen. Damn, I was pissed. Was Wait, so, so oh, you just got to work late, and then he went out a little, a little late. He's always been around like the golf courses a little bit. Like I've heard, he's up there once or twice a year. Yeah, they're trying to. My job is trying to get his outing because he has his own golf. Oh, okay, so. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll get them later. On. That's something that where I feel like golf drops the ball with. There's so many basketball players, baseball players, and football players that around play here. golf. Yeah, you no know, professional athletes, and yeah, around here too. But professional athletes, and I just feel like they don't market that enough. All the Knicks players fucking live like, like J.R. Smith is an avid golfer. Like he's played. I've seen him play. He's yeah. got a sweet swing. Can, really? I can imagine. Oh, he can't he's got a sweet fucking stroke, Dude, bro. He can. Stro- yeah, he can crush the ball. Really? Really? <laughs> Yo, he keeps his left arm so like he's got he's he's almost he's I won't say he's got a pro swing, but he's got a, a scratch golf for a swing. Wow, he's really good. Wow, wow. Yeah. And a, he was with there with a bad chick that was just walking alongside. Him. Shocker, I, like, I bet. Oh, it pays to be an NBA player. Yeah, tell you that. It pays to be Jr. Bro, shout out to Jr. Man, he's also one of my favorites. Definitely, best bad shot taker of all time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bad shot. Ooh. J-O. What do you do? Oh, I bet. Oh, he made it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Yo, that's exactly what it's like. Yo, we should do a video of just like Yo, what's why like would to you narrate. Take that? Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, just narrating his games. Like, it's such an emotional roller coaster to watch him play. Yo, to end this night, Craig Carton, man. Oh, oh word. Craig What the Carton. fuck? Speaking My of Nerd Shell. Pots and Pans. 914 tonight. 914, baby. It's a 914 day. It is. Oh my god. And I saw him. I didn't realize it was Venus. I went to City Hall. 914 is fucking up right now. Yeah. Saw, we I talked saw, about Ray Rice, yeah. Goodell, Craig Carton, and Zuckerberg. Fucking, I saw Ray Rice. He spoke at City Hall to like get the key to City, whatever. And then after that, uh, or not after, I guess it was before, uh, Carton spoke. I didn't even know he was from New Rochelle. Yeah, he's from New Rochelle. Yeah, he does a softball game in Rochelle every year. Nah, just, I mean, you know, this is going back like a year ago, but yeah. I think he went to New Rochelle High and all that. Yeah. He's yeah. fucked. Bro, he's so, so what's ro- the story? He's royally fucked. Like, he, like facing like 40 years fucked. And like his, his show, especially Boomer, he's so fucking conservative. You ever, oh, you ever like, is. Are they, he's Boomer is. so fucking conservative. Dude, when, they they talked have, about, when they talked about Nicki Minaj the whole time, they were like Nicki Minaj. And they were doing it intentionally. It's like Nicki Minaj. But they're good, though. Chris, I like them. Chris Christie. Yeah. Chris Christie's always I don't like show. Chris Christie. He's always on that show. I can't stand that. The basketball player? No, no the, the governor. New oh, the governor. Oh, I'm thinking Doug, Doug Christie. Yeah. The, pang- the penguin from Batman. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can't stand Chris Christie. But I like I, li- I like Boomer and, and, and Carton. They got just like that. I don't know. No, I, but Carton right. fell off, though, man. He's, he's falling off and, like, just revealing a lot about his personal life. It, it, it's almost... You can almost like sense, I guess, like really? I think it plays a part into it, like mm-hmm. his his character, because he would just start being like a dick to callers and stuff like that, and just. You well, know. so is that dude, friends. So first of all, I don't know. How but that's always been him. I I, I, I will forever love Francesca. I know you will. You but, got, like <laughs> really? Yeah, oh my bro, god, these guys really? love you, bro. I can't listen to his voice for more than I, five minutes of love. <laughs> I I love I can listen to that man talk forever. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's so funny. That sounds like a deep love right there. Yeah. Nah, dude, they they like he does. They bro. go back, huh? All right. Yo, but um, so getting back to Greg Carr, he was actually he was one of my favorites when I first heard him. I was like, yo, this dude is is the truth, man. Like he's just funny. 
But I feel like he's falling off. Like, he doesn't really make me laugh anymore. He's not interesting anymore in the past, like, three years. And then, but it's just so crazy. So people that don't know, Craig Carton does the local show in New York City for WFAN for Sports Talk Radio with Boomer Esiason. And Boomer and Carton is a big show out here. And he got caught basically with a Ponzi scheme because he was so over his head in gambling debt. He was like $3 million in the hole in gambling debt. That's Damn. ridiculous. That's and he crazy. made up like a fake company saying that, um, convincing people basically that he gets concert tickets and sporting event tickets and he was going to buy stacks of them and resell them for a profit. And this company that he, you know, he had access to all these venues and arenas because his connections. So he sweet talked some hedge funds and some investors into it. And, I guess the SEC and the FBI got involved and basically saw that, you know, he was wiring money back to his casinos and, and personal people that he He's got a casino? To. Yo, he was he was owing like casinos like so much oh, money. He doesn't have a casino. But, no. Millions he was owed. He was he owed. Wow. Yo, what what yeah, happens when you like owe a casino like five hundred grand? Like what like what like I didn't even know you could. I didn't know you could either. I thought I, I thought when you I make you a bet, you gotta same. put the bet you gotta put the that money down. That must be like first. a special high roller Yeah. Thing. Yeah, you. Probably, I thought you had to put the money down. But first. I feel like he's not famous enough to get that kind of line exactly. of credit. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, he, but, which is which is fishy about the whole thing because those dudes do not make that much money. No, he, right, they said his right. salary was two hundred fifty k yeah. for the for the year. Exactly. Right. But he also has like he probably other picks up another hundred grand in in in, in other know, other stuff throughout the year. So he probably like, I know he wrote like a book or something like that. Yeah. Like, but he don't make that much money. If, if if I own a casino, I'm he not, not going to loan him three million or whatever. He may you know, have been a million. Yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. a net worth of like a couple million or something. But he's he's a radio personality. He must have smooth talked them into. Oh, Oh, a hundred percent. You know, talked them into it. Either way, it seemed like Boomer was caught off guard by it, like from when. <laughs> He missed a conservative. You don't he want, works with him every want day. No part of it. Yeah, nah, he, he works with him. He probably every right. Day. He probably knows something. He probably up. knew something was up. He wanted he, no part. Maybe of he it. didn't know, but he, he must. Go, he, he must have had to down. know something, right? He ain't going. Come on, man. That's like if I was going to do some. Because they're mad you know? close, bro. Yeah, they are. They are. Close. If I was going to do some shit, would you know? Come on. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. You, but you, you're right. Like at the end of the day, if it got nothing to do with you, I'm sure he asked him too about it, like. Yeah, he probably be like, "Yo, man, you good? You alright? Yeah, you know, like, yo, dog, you know, I, do you know, I, I like, I, I got paid millions of dollars to play in the NFL. Like, <laughs> what do you think, Boomer? I might be able to you know, help you out here. Nah, nah, I'm sure he didn't want no part of that, man. Probably because he, he, so. he don't want your name. I'm sure part Craig of that. didn't want to ask him for money. I don't know. I mean, he probably did. He too, probably. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a, that's a sticky situation. Who knows? You, know, yeah, it, you, you don't do stuff for your friends you wouldn't normally do. Yeah. But just, you're talking about Mills, though. That's that's different. That's a lot of money. Especially and when you know that. Especially he probably knows him good enough to know, and he would always talk about gambling on the show, which right. is crazy. He like he's, he's one problem. of those hosts that like, All right, I tell you what to do here. All right, you're gonna hit Ladies New England ba- game. New England's lane six to uh, you know Denver tonight. You're gonna take New England. You're gonna take this. You're gonna yeah. take. You're gonna go order yourself steak. Get a nice Jack Daniels on the rocks, <laughs> and boom, call a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's basically was his whole shtick. Like yeah. part of it. Yeah. But, he ended up. Yeah, that's crazy. But what what was the deal with the? Boomer's tickets. good though. Boomer's like inside the NFL. He he's good, bro. What like, was the deal with the tickets? He had like show tickets or something. It was basically all like he was that a was stub hub, right? He was, was trying to be like it was a, a scheme. Yeah, it was a fraud thing. I don't I don't know if there were real tickets or I don't know how legit that was. But um, uh, what, how much times he faces? Like forty five years or something stupid like that, right? Well, each cow holds different amount of time, but yeah, it was it did seem like a lot. It's probably gonna do at least five years. Yeah, I would say so. According. I, I, I think he's going to do, like, 5 to 10. Oh, I think they'll hit him with, like, 7. According to oh. Celebrity Net Worth, uh, Boomer Esiason is worth $15 million. So he could have lent him some money. We have Boomer got a restaurant in Manhattan. He could've, he it's could've actually a pretty him. good restaurant. Got Boomer's bowling bad money. I, don't yeah. think, I think Boomer Esiason's a shitty friend. That's what I think. <laughs> You're wild. Man. I think Boomer Esiason's a smart man. <laughs> he want no part of that shit. Nah, he definitely don't. He said, You're a fuck-up. You a fuck boy. And he probably got a contract to do his own show called The Boomer Show. <laughs> so yeah. he's probably good. Well, let's be honest. Like, uh, these radios, are they going to last for long? Because Francesca, I know your boy's leaving. He's probably going to do a podcast. WFAN is in a sticky situation, man. And they need new flavor. They need, like, they, they're they lost, man. They're so lost. Dude, Rosenberg f- from Hot 97 is yeah. on one yeah. of the sports talk
Mike McKay. Michael McKay. Oh. oh, he's annoying, man. He's that guy. Like, Boomer, like, I don't always agree with him, but I like him just because, like, he's just, he just seems like a genuine dude. Like, Michael K is just, like, a little over the top for me. Yeah. They, they did some question or something, and they were just talking amongst each other, amongst each other and they were like, yeah, basically, like, if your friend was in a pinch, basically, it would almost a situation like this. If your friend was in, a, in, like, a legal pinch, would you help him? And Michael K was just like, no, no, I wouldn't help him. No, you they're could tell exactly his type. Yeah, he's like, no, they're a fuck up. It's like, you know, someone Wait, that would what? be a friend. They were asking, they were doing like a for instance or whatever. What and if it was, it was the Yankees in trouble? That dude would fucking oh, yeah. murder everyone for the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he would. Exactly. But I mean, dude, it, it, just, it really told you like the type of person he is. I mean, he's all about himself, his brand, his business, and his money. Which, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I can't judge a man for that. But, you know, just, yeah, but you, you can't trust him. He probably him. doesn't have a lot he of have If, if he's really he like that, he probably doesn't have like a lot of friends. No, he doesn't. He probably got like bullied when he was a kid, because yeah. he because he wanted to be the announcer for the Yankees. Every night he goes home and Yankee. looks looks at his old yearbook and looks at the people that used to beat him up and says. Look Pro- where it's I'm probably at now. something along the, the line like. Uh, the- Shout to um, Nick, sorry to butt in, guys, and and also Paulie Giuliani said Rosenberg is a waste of space. Damn. And it's funny because I, you know, I used to like Rosenberg more than I do just personally as a fan perspective. Um, Hip hop. Radio and sports radio, mm-hmm. I think. Um, hip hop, he's so knowledgeable about hip hop. Yeah, he is, and, and he did a lot of great things for a lot of artists. And even still, if you listen to his show, I caught his show the other night on Sunday night, still playing dope music. I was like, damn, what is this? Why is this playing right now? And I was like, oh, it's Rosenberg segment. So he still plays like a lot of great music. And when he first went to ESPN, he had his show on like random days, like Sundays. I actually called in, and um, he was doing a decent show, like talking about, you know, even talking about wrestling and stuff that he's interested in. But the second that he went on Michael K, yo, it's just not his fit at all, man. And like, he's just not like that show is so stupid, corporate, like mainstream, even though Don LaGreca does a, a good job. Like Rosenberg, bro, that's not you, man. Like you're just you're taking L's on that show. I just got to let you know from from a man to fan perspective right there. Like, don't do it like. Either get your own show or, or give it up, man. He it's should just, have his own he's sports probably, show. He's probably collecting a check, though. Oh, his check a nice, nice. Check. It just don't fit, though. And I, just, I, I agree. He's a waste of space on that show for me. I, I have. I, I, don't, I don't. He doesn't bring it, value so. to it, and the show doesn't bring value to me. So I don't really hear it. So It's probably a stepping stone because, I mean, he's clearly overly passionate about sports. He loves sports. Right. And, you know, it's not permanent. He's not going to do it for the next 20 years. I mean, that's just not... I mean, you know, I don't think there will be another, you know, people like the Don Imuses and, and, right. and yeah. Princesses and the Stearns yeah, like that anymore. It's too. So, I mean, knowing him, probably the next few years will probably leave. I see the thing that I, th- I like about Boomer is um, sometimes I agree he's like super conservative, but sometimes like he's that guy that's like, well, you know what? You got to go out there and you got to do this. You can't. And like sometimes it's like that old school New Yorker to me where I'm like, right, right, I appreciate right, right. that. No, definitely. Because definitely. everyone else is not like that and Rosenberg's the complete opposite of that like he's so super far liberal mm-hmm. and it just like yeah. it oozes out of what he says and it's like sometimes it's like alright bro like I know you're a cool guy but don't take it that far <laughs> but um I mean Boomer does sometimes too to you know on certain topics and certain opinions but but it, it's cool to hear something that's not like do you like uh Colin Coward <laughs> yes, and that's a funny thing. I, yeah. I like Colin. I, actually, I like I Colin. hear his show. He's a, he's a, I, I mean, he, I, I'll see his show on TV. He's an intelligent guy. Yeah, he's more intelligent about life than he is knowledgeable about sports. I think. Okay, that's a good. Point. I'd say about that. Yeah. Um, like when it just comes to like knowing sports, I'd say like Francesca like would just blow him out of the water. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about. Shock. <laughs> Nah, but Colin Coward is cool if you're talking about the business of sports, the marketing of sports. He's always bringing a lot of perspective to how these things are run as companies and corporations and and a lot of good insight on things that you wouldn't necessarily think about. And you just don't get the same mundane, like, all right, this team's going to beat this team or this is what happened, Monday uh, morning quarterback type of thing. Right. So he's really good when it comes to that stuff. And, you know, we that's why call. he is who he is. So shout out to Colin Coward. So Colin Coward has just called. Caller? Colin Coward, you on the line. Yo, I had a call and you're speaking my language right now. Hey, oh. Hello, Marty. <laughs> what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Yo, I, I'm actually surprised to hear three people that like Colin Coward. I thought I was like one of the only ones. I Dude, like, I, I like Colin. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what it was. I think I don't know if it was Kaepernick or it might have been Ray Rice or something like that. And I was just like, 
he's actually thinking. He's not regurgitating what maybe he oh, heard no, on the man. Yeah. He actually thinks. And it wasn't so much that I was personally attached to, to, to the story that he was covering, but I was able to see. I was like, oh, this guy actually thinks. He's got some empathy. He's not just a talking head. And, and he went in depth for like 30 and minutes. And he brings different people on his show that yeah. are from both sides yeah. of the aisle. Yeah. He yeah. makes yeah. mega yeah. comparisons. Too. Yes, he like, does. He'll like, He'll like he'll make like an example of, his his, of like a weird situation, and then kind of like yeah, his analogies are are on point, and like yeah. he's he's and you're to, like to your point about like his knowledge of sports, like if there's something like he, in my opinion, like he's very West Coast based, so yeah, his, his opinion on like West Coast college football, yeah, he he loves college football, he's he great does college yeah. football, yeah, and then, and you can tell he's very <clears throat> you know when he when there's a topic he doesn't know much about. He'll go like extremely shock jock and just try to like yeah. shock somebody and, and yeah. yeah so like but when he but when he knows and he has knowledge about it, like he'll bring on great guests like his college football guests are awesome his yeah, NBA yeah. guests are awesome yeah and even though he does do a lot of NBA which I like like I feel like he doesn't know a lot about it but like or he'll just say, yeah he just gets good guests on the show yeah exactly but you're right he does. You, so you like Colin Coward? I didn't even know that and I know you yeah I love Colin oh dude I, I always thought like. WFAN should have went hard at him, but I don't think he fits like the WFAN mold. Nah, he, he doesn't like, that hot. He doesn't co-host. fit. He, he, that blonde girl. Oh, she's so hot. Christine. Yeah, she's awesome. She's hot. Man. She's hot, but there's a really? lot of hot co-hosts. Yo, there, now. yo there's a lot of hot like, Joy women. Oh, yo, I think Joy oh Taylor God. followed me on Twitter. Yo, let me get your phone. I was about to DM her. <laughs> yo, she is so bad. Even the girl Molly on ESPN Molly is so Quirum, bad. Then the girl from the NFL Network one. K Adams. Oh yeah, they all oh, look yeah. alike. Yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> they like. It was like Molly, they, they, Molly when they do like casting. They, they, like, like, they have to look Ma- like Latin. one person. Yeah, they do, Nick. They kind of look alike. <laughs> the girl Molly and, and Joy look like literally sisters. Yeah, they do. They they look very similar. similar. <laughs> yeah. They look similar. They look. They're Shout both Jaylen so Rose sexy though. Getting it in Who? Jalen Rose getting in there with Molly. Molly Quinn. Get out of here. Yeah. I was a little hating. Keep up the good work, fellas. I'm out. Yo, right, thanks for calling in, Nick. Yes, sir. I did not know that. Respect the game. Jalen's like bland to me. Like I think the funniest thing he did was called uh, Grant Hill a uh, Uncle Tom. Chat. Uh-huh. Jalen Rose. <laughs> yeah. But that was during the. Uh, like I feel like the since the Fat Five, days. he just I don't know. He doesn't do it. He's sometimes he's corny sometimes. Right. Like, when he's, he's up corny. there, he tries to dominate the the. He the, doesn't say nothing stage. that like makes me. I don't know. Like, I like when Kenny Smith goes kind of like way over the top, but like I don't know. Jalen there was Rose. nothing better. Jalen Rose don't do it for me. Yo, the NBA post post game. There's nothing. There's better. nothing better. That is the best yeah. sports show on TV. Yeah, it is. It is yeah. hands Shaq, fucking down. Yeah. Shaq, Yo, Ernie Johnson Ernie, is a legend. Yeah. Dude. Shaq, I love Ernie. Ernie Johnson. Do not underestimate Ernie Johnson. Yeah. Bro. No, he's he's a G. He's a he's, G. He, he plays G like too. he's like passive too. and shit. Oh but, yeah. He's mad. He knows smart. his shit. Bro. Just the banter that they have is hilarious. The like the whole crew. Do you Yo, watch it's classic. Do you watch NBA Off Court? The oh, you talk, court? Which, which one are you talking about? The round table one. Oh, center yeah. Court? That's one of the Fucking best shows. I love yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, All yeah, the time. Yeah, yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, yes, yeah. it is. That's where the NBA low key just kills it. Yeah, 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 yeah Like, yeah. oh, my God. It's so good. But, um, yeah, and the. The guests they have up there, it's yo, know, so many funny things. Yeah. It's so, straight so locker stories. room talk. It's straight so genuine and organic. It, it's oh man, I could watch that. Stuff. Open so, court, it, open, open court. court. That's, open that's court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the fact that Ernie's up there just makes it great. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then Steve Kerr is funny too sometimes, like because he's always like, yeah, I wasn't that good type shit, but he's like, yeah. but he's always got funny stories. He's like, shit. I can make a jumper though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm drippy. Um, what, what was I going to say to end it? Uh, NBA, NBA. I just had a good point I was going to make. Something about... Yo, they, they're some of the best to do it, though, man. I just... It's the best show. Yeah, it's it is. It's the best. Oh, best this is what show. I was going to say before. Easily. <laughs> Yo, I was watching, like, ESPN. It was, like, pregame to when the Knicks played the Cavs last year. And it was, like, Chauncey... And a couple of guys that were just up there, and it wasn't like a regular cast. It was like a lot of players that were up there on the panel for whatever reason. And there was no like regular Joe Schmo type of guy, like no Ernie or anything. And they were just right. talking. And they just started talking about weed and marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> this is on open court. No, it was, no, this was on. It was a like on a cast? pregame. Oh shit! Oh, it was on a pregame, bro. <laughs> Yo, and, I, and they were literally saying, like, admitting that like guys play high, you know? What? And like, or or that guys would leave the game and go smoke, you know? Yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, Stephen yeah. Jackson admitted playing to playing high. He played, a, bunch, he played, a couple of them had. 
I wouldn't be surprised. I, yo, I've talked to people. I never got into it because I don't smoke a lot. And every time I smoke and I play, I was fucking off point when I tried it in high school. Yeah. And then, like, but people say, people that I play with, too, at the gym, they're like, yo, once you start playing high, you don't want to play sober. And then you'll feel like, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I don't know. I feel I, like I got to be sober. Man. I feel like it's a confidence thing. Like, if you're really nice at something and then you do it high, you'll be good. But if you're, like, yeah. not lacking nah, confidence sure. Yeah, skills, I'm talking to kids that play every day. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a confidence thing, but I also think it's, like, like, a, uh, like, it's, like, people, some people react different to being high. Yeah, so Some people sure. are, like, a little nervous when they're high or they get paranoid, whatever. Yeah, definitely. Some people are, like, that shit just relaxes them. Yeah. Y'all taking it. I, when you play sports... When you are not thinking about anything when you're playing, you play your best. The minute you start yeah. thinking about, like, this, like, I'm, oh, I missed the pass right there, blah, 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 And blah. basketball is the ultimate yeah, game Yeah, the of that. minute you start thinking That's why shit, basketball is life, because basketball is just, it's the epitome. I think it's sports in general, though. It's the epitome. Yeah, yeah it is. It's just being in the zone is or the epitome life. of consciousness. Yeah. Of, like, being there in that moment in where you're flow, completely, man. your brain is functioning, but you're not thinking. You're in the fucking flow, bro. And once you're in that zone... Especially if you go out there and you have a game where you hit three threes and then like and then all of a sudden things are just working, you're passing, but you're not thinking, you're just there. You don't even realize it until like after the game either. Yeah. Like you're it's like, a high, bro. I That's why I still play right basketball there. so Jesus much. Christ. It's just like you just fiend for those you're like literally I'm just chasing that that game, those two games a season it's where like I'm just addicts. like uh, literally. Like if I have ten games, I'm chasing those two games each season where, where I'm, I'm just like missing. unconscious. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, how it is, that's how it is with golf. I mean, yeah. you hit a good ball, you want to do it again. Yeah. Again, again, again. That's true. That's I think that's just life, man. Yeah. Yeah. Stop overthinking, guys. That's how we're going to leave. Yo, that's a great way to send off, man. I like it. We gone. We gone.